Everybody please rise and bring this meeting to order. Please salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, Ms. Hamill, could we get a roll call, please? Yes, Mr. Chairman Nara. Here. Ms. Hamill, here. Mr. Kurtz? Here. Mr. McLaughlin? Mr. Potts? Ms. Trudowski? Uh, here. Mr. Wolf? Here. And Mr. Basil? Here. Um, under announcements, um, are there any edits to the agenda by board members? None from the administration. Okay, seeing none. Um, one announcement, we'll have an executive session after this meeting to discuss personnel and litigation. And litigation. Um, also, if you would like to have a comment on what's going on tonight, uh, please approach the microphone, state your name and address. Having said that, are there any public comments on the agenda? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to the superintendent's report. Uh, good evening, everyone. I have a very uh, short report this evening. Typically in September, we're just getting school rolling. So just for everyone's information, we're already into our third full week of school. So far, everything's running smoothly. Um, all of our extracurricular activities are in full swing, and basically everything's running very smoothly. So I really don't have much beyond that. Transportation seems to be in order. Um, everything else is going well. I did get a, um, an email from a constituent saying that there was an issue with a bus run in the morning, some students being dropped off. And yeah, that actually was worked out. It was worked yes, out. we took care of that. So how's that? Is that the? Well, which one is it? Because I um, know there was a. I, my understanding was there was um you know it was a bus run and the kids were dropped off early before the school opened and then there was it was like a double run situation where they had to go back out and get the next load of kids to. Hmm. If you want to forward that to me, I haven't heard anything about that one. Okay. We had like I said we had a few blips, but I thought we took care of all of them. So if there's something else, I'll check into it. Okay. Um. Any board comments on the opening days? Okay, seeing none, curriculum and instruction. Um, we had a curriculum and instruction meeting uh, last Wednesday evening. I was unable to attend that um, due to a, the being present at the Amity Township meeting on a bridge issue. Uh, Mrs. Torsha was there and ran that meeting. And in Mr. Shaheen's absence tonight, I'm going to ask Mrs. Torsha to um, report out as to some of the things that were discussed at that meeting. Mrs. Torsha, if you wouldn't mind taking the floor, please.
right? Mr. Kurtz, could you? I think you covered it. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Any questions uh, from the board on curriculum instruction? No. Okay. Um, any public comments? All right. Seeing none. Move on to buildings and grounds. Uh, item A, we'll, we can cover that again under finance since he made an appearance. We had a. We might as well talk about it now. Okay. Um, I'll start it then. Um, just for the benefit of the public, we um, had Mr. Uh, Capaferi attended our um, finance committee meeting last Thursday uh, to discuss um, some of the leasing options that we may want to enter into if, we ulti if the board ultimately decides to lease space to the River Rock Academy at APC. Um, that's still my recommendation moving forward. Obviously, I'll need board support to do that. Um, board members had a chance to uh, ask a lot of questions of, of Mr. Capaferi, who was there. Uh, a lot of them not having to do with the finances of it, but with some of the concerns that were brought out by the public regarding safety and issues like that. So I'll, I'll let any of the board members that were there speak to that. But just wanted to update you on that, that we're continuing to move forward with that whole process. I think uh, from a finance perspective, I think the questions that have come up were, one, we we're still looking to get um, examples of leases uh, that they have with other school districts um, that were probably more geared towards a blended model, which would include not only uh, placements, they would take a certain number of placements from us, where our, our kids right now are currently going to other schools, um, similar to River Rock. And um, so that would be a cost avoidance for the school district, in both in terms of transportation and in terms of uh, these placement costs. And then two, uh, maybe a, a price per square foot that they would actually pay us in terms of leasing the facility and maybe some common area maintenance expense added to that. But we have yet to see some sample contracts that they have with um, the other school districts. So once we do, um, and our goal is to have those. We'll have those rather soon. Rather Before soon. I, I would like to have them within, I think, in the next two weeks okay. for, for our initial review. I think if we could get those before the board uh, for our September meeting, voting meeting, that would be helpful so we could have some discussion along those lines. And, and the finance committee meets again September 23rd. Is it the 23rd? 25th. 25th. Um, so our goal is to have a discussion about those leases at that time as well. And I think that's pretty much it from a, uh, from a finance perspective. In terms of um, some of the concerns that the public expressed in terms of safety, um, uh, the gentleman went through a whole host of different things that they uh, do to ensure the safety of their students um, as well as the public at large. And quite frankly, um, the licensing that they have for this particular facility did not uh, is not for uh, students that have, I don't know what the medical Psychiatric. Term is. Yeah, but wasn't there a particular uh, nomenclature used by the state that he referred to? Um, oh, when it comes to juvenile, del adjudicated juvenile delinquents as well. Correct. So neither one of those types of uh, populations would be housed in this facility. They don't have the licensure for that here. And I think of the 17 or 18 schools that he rattled off that they do have, only one of those is licensed for that. That's and correct. It was in, and that's not in this area. It was in York or some other place like that. Um, and that's really, was there anything else you guys can think of from that? Um, as far as? Uh, uh, just from a facilities discussion. From or a facilities discussion. Even finance. Just, just some of the things that we, we learned from, from speaking with them was uh, to address the safety concerns specifically. We talked about having very low student-to-staff ratio. Um, they don't allow any cell phones whatsoever in, in the building. Um, they have a wand, and they all, everyone gets wanded before they enter into the building. Uh, no backpacks are allowed in, in the building. Uh, they can carry their lunch in, but pretty much no other bags can get carried into the building. And those are searched? Um, they do searches from grade 6 to 12. They do random searches in the building. They have behavior, behavioral managers on site which for the most part, he said, are retired police officers. And they're not there to, uh, to put fear into the kids. They're there as sort of more of a positive influence uh, to work with them and, and be more of a friendly presence <coughs> instead of a threatening presence. Uh, their dismissal schedules are timed to not be near our dismissal schedule, so there's no interaction going on there. They're not allowed to drive to school buses that take them back and forth. It just goes on and on and on. We, you know, we asked about 
any kind of incidents in the past that have occurred in other, uh, you know, in other facilities. Uh, not so much in the facility itself, but anything that might have happened after school hours. And there have been none. Uh, they seem to be a really top-notch organization. And he encouraged people to do their own research and Google um, whatever records they thought were necessary. Actually encouraged uh, folks to even take a look at the police records within the municipalities in which they work uh, if they felt that that was an issue. So um, they were very thorough in answering what, the questions. Do they, they have the like emergency response plan or something would happen that they coordinate with local police? I mean, that was one of the, because of the proximity of Avenue Elementary to this location, I think the concern of the He did mention that they have a relationship with the local, whatever the local police department would be for each of those areas. For us here, I guess it would Amity. Amity. For Amity. Or even the state police, who knows. But um, they, they do have some, some type of... They foster a relationship with all of... And, and wherever their sites are with the local police force. So at some point, if and when they would come in, we would certainly encourage them to reach out to Amity to establish that, that, that relationship. Sure, I would think the proximity of... That helps. Of, of, ...of the Amity police station right across the street, basically, from the school is also a problem. Well, he said that uh, in other locations, it's nothing for the police officers to just drop in, you know, at, at different times to see what's going on. And they actually encourage it. Again, as part of this issue of, of the police being a positive role model for these kids, not so much as a security thing, but it's nice. It goes hand in glove with that, but it was more of they wanted, you know, sure. the police there as part of a, a positive experience for the children. I think that when we move, decide to move forward, that we have some frequently asked questions that we put on the website regarding this because we don't have a lot of public you know, participation here, but the questions will come up again. Absolutely. And if we have some, you know, to, to Mr. Sermonero's point, I mean, all these questions were asked and answered. If you, you know, maybe take the top ten, put them on there, and how they're going to handle this, I think it would be beneficial. Well, I, I'm sorry. That is a good idea. One. Two, the meeting was recorded as part of the finance committee meeting, and so it, we can, you know, it's out there and available for the public to listen to. And uh, as part of the meetings for that minute, uh, the minutes for that meeting. And uh, three, he did also extend to the board um, to have an open house October. I think it's the 11th. 11th. We'll get the date for sure. Uh, where the board could come out. It's a weekday, I believe. It's the one that they just opened in Wilson. 11 to 2 or something like that. They'll serve lunch. You can come out. You can ask questions, see what's going on with the operation, that sort of thing. And it's at, it is at Wilson. And he also mentioned that every single Everything I'm pretty sure he said every single school that they have is in a former school building of some kind or another. So it's not like they're opening these things up in a commercial shopping center or something like that. So um, the concerns that we were raising were concerns that they've run into in the past. He said in one community, I guess when they first started, you know, people were coming out in droves, um, you know, to oppose it because they didn't understand what it was that they did. And then uh, later... And he's like, these same people are the ones that would support this school, you know, this school before the, the board would vote to get rid of it. So um, they have lots of uh, ice cream parties and, you know, different things that they do, to, you know, to engage the community and, and support um, community events and things of that nature. So they become, in his words, part of the fabric of the community, and they're here to support the community as well. So um, it, was a, it was a great uh opportunity for the board to interact with him directly and ask specific questions and I would encourage other board members if they have the time to attend the open house that they go. We also discussed at that meeting the prospect of actually having Mr. Capaferi come to a full meeting like like the, although there are not a lot of people here tonight but to a meeting with the full board to have maybe the same kind of conversation just so people can ask questions to get the word out. So um, We wanted to back, back that up a little bit to the point where we, from a financial perspective, understood, you know, what the deal terms were and you know, what would be advocated to, to us as a school and our district, you know, and uh, try to get that all in place before we took, right. wasted anyone's time having to come here and talk to us all again. We can't make a deal. Why? Why do it? Okay. So we'll move forward with the financial end of it, hopefully by the end of this month, and then... Well, by the 25th, for sure. Well, if, right, yes, absolutely. That's what I meant by, by the time we meet at that meeting. Right. Okay. Um, next is facilities committee, uh, committee meeting. First Monday of October, whatever date that is. Sandy, you have a calendar there? 
that will be our we'll, we'll advertise that but that's our normal meeting time for facilities and I know we did uh, schedule October 7th so we will be having a facilities committee meeting uh, C and D I, I put out to the board for discussion regarding uh, the $30 processing fee and the student parking fee of $50 right so as I understand these issues this, these are recommendations made by the Revenue Enhancement Committee last May um, in, in conjunction with the uh, activity fee discussion and I was under the impression that we'd adopt these things but apparently we did officially didn't take a vote and so they're up now for discussion and, and a vote. The uh, parking fee is that for the students who have, currently do not have um, a parking pass and are going to purchase one? That would be up to the board, depending on what you decide. Well, the people already have the $20, or bought their $20 parking pass. You're not going to go back to the same people and say, we, we would like $30 more. I guess that's up for the discussion. No, that, that, exactly. Because then, you are, then somebody might say, well, $50 here, I'm giving my $20 back. And yeah, I don't think we can do that. Next year, I mean, the ship has sailed. Would have been nice to have implemented that, but it's too late in my opinion. I think you could implement it for people that are signing up in November, or, you know, whatever. I don't know what the process is. Of Mr. Hankel, would you mind approaching the, the microphone for... Um, I do want to make the board aware of what happened with the actual $20 fee this year in terms of um, revenue that, that we have produced, because Mr. Hankel did change a few things from the way Mr. McElmoyle had done it. Tom, you want to speak to that, please? About uh, how... What, what's the process for... What's the process for getting a parking pass? The students uh, and they have the application form. Real life, we have to the Now, in years past, last year the program August, the fee structure was already in place, and the incentive program was already in place. That's eliminating the incentives. That, the way you did that was you eliminated the incentives that used to be in place. Flat fee.
Okay. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Hankel? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hankel. I'd just like to say, I, in the, uh, I've heard that in the past the, the, the vehicles haven't been patrolled to see if they have a parking pass on them. So some students have been able to park for free. Uh, so if we can just make sure we are checking that, particularly in the winter. I heard that people just don't go out and, and check to see if the passes are on. So if we could just be aware of that, it would be helpful. We'll take care of that. Okay, so, um, you know, we have, we have this um, idea of in, uh, increasing the parking fee to $50, and we've heard from one board member who says, you know, that ship has sailed for those who've already purchased, the 110 students to date who've already purchased it. Any other thoughts? I agree. I, I wouldn't object to having it to uh, apply to anybody in it. Uh, going forward? Going forward. Okay. Because there's some people there don't get their driver's license until the spring. Right. Okay. Any other? And we're not at capacity. Well, clearly not. We got another seventy-nine spaces to go. Um, what about this idea of, uh, you, Mr. Hankel? You guys already are you are you implementing this plan of warning notices and and to parents and fines, or we could throw that into the motion. Okay. Yeah. Right. Are you thinking about adding it to the motion? Yeah, I mean, I think you would put you put a, a warning system in with a fine, and if it's if the fines are ignored, then you would eventually have to tow a vehicle, particularly for the parking in places that it's problematic. I I don't see how you treat this any differently than any other type of community, where you'd have you'd vest that power to the administration; they can use their discretion. You want to add to that motion if you're going to. Vote. We don't have a formal motion as of yet. Okay, I'm sorry. So um, I don't know. What, what, One if, of those. Are I know we have some systems in place, like uh, kids are delinquent with the turning a book or something. They won't get their diploma until that's correct. Is it the same with having late parking, parking fine? Fees? Do you do you hold the parking fees as an obligation? Yes, absolutely. I was going to say because if you didn't, if there's no penalty in paying, not paying the fine, right. you can park there forever. So you may want the power to tow. Get somebody's attention. All right, so um, I guess the only other thing then would be a point of implementation. We want to give it effective immediately, 30 days notice, two weeks notice. As far as the fine or as far as the increase? Everything, I guess. The parking permits are rolling. So as he said, if you turn driving age later in the year, so the sooner you do that, the sooner Make everything we'll effective $50. October 1st? I think that's reasonable. Yeah, pending every, pending our vote. Well, we'd vote tonight. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would say effective Okay, so could, if, I get a, if I could get a motion from somebody to articulate what we just discussed, which would be? I would get a motion that, uh, that the student parking fee uh, immediately on our uh, tomorrow be changed to $50. Okay. Anything about towing or? I would do seven. I mean, do we have to? Uh, no, you don't. We can do it any way you want. I'm just trying to. It would probably make sense for us to. We'd probably have to set the fine too, right? Right. Like yes, you would. Fine, right. Amount. We don't want to be. Do you want to do it as two separate motions, maybe? I'm not. We're making a motion. So how unless, would you want? To? Unless you want to. Yeah, I think we'll keep it as a separate issue because we want to see something in writing as far as how how it's going to be implemented. So it's going to be a warning first, a fine. How about if you give us a couple days to work that part out? We'll bring it back for the September end of the month vote. Okay. Yeah, that's fine with me. So with this motion, this is immediate. You're making a motion to increase immediately following our approval tonight, perhaps tomorrow. Effective September um, 10th. In an increase to fifty dollars for anyone who has not yet paid. Correct. Right. So thank you for that clarification. Okay. okay. Any I'll request? second that. Okay, we have first and second. Any additional discussion? Can you restate the motion, please, a little bit louder? Ms. Hamill, you want me to do that? What? You got it? Or you want me to? The motion, the motion was to immediately increase 
the student parking fee to $50 um, from $20, effective September 10th, um, for any and all students who have not yet paid uh, for a parking permit. Okay? Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, um, if there's no further discussion, can we get a roll call and vote, please? The motion was um, motioned by Mr. Wolf, seconded by Mr. Sermonero. Uh, Mr. Sermonero? Yes. Mrs. Hamill, yes. Mr. Kurtz? No. Uh, Ms. Uh, Trudowski? Yes. Mr. Wolf? Yes. And Mr. Basil? Yes. Motion passed. Okay. Um, and I think on a separate issue, then you guys will come back to us on, on the, uh, the voting meeting with a policy put forward for, or just an administrative guideline or something on on fining and towing. What the fining and penalties and towing? Yes, will be. Okay. absolutely. Um, the second issue here is the uh, approval of a thirty dollars processing fee for the facilities use form. So this was discussed last year too via the REC. It was a recommendation made by the Revenue Enhancement Committee to the board, um, but the board um, failed to vote on it. So, I'll make a motion to um, institute a $30 processing fee for the solutions. We, we have a second. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none, did you get the motion, Connor? Can you restate it again? There's a motion to um, instill a $30 processing fee for a facilities use form. Okay, thank you. Okay. Pretty much. So this, if you have a nonprofit, they would have to fill this out one time. So well, if, it, the, if you had the, the Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts, they would they were going to pay this fee if they paid one time. Well, my my understanding, and Mrs. Hamill, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I, I, I think the intent was any time someone had to touch a new form, it was a thirty dollar fee. It's so basically a processing and handling fee. So it, this would happen each time. But that doesn't prevent somebody from coming in, which we frequently see when we're approving agenda items, somebody coming in saying, well, gonna, I would like to reserve this facility on 17 different dates. Right. And then okay. they're just, then they're paying for one, okay. it's right. one just form. One form. 17 per, dates. Per time you okay. use the form. All right. I'm just but if, not per event. event. Okay. Yeah, but if they're going to come in and do it 17 separate times, well, then they're going to pay oh, some. Right. Exactly. exactly. And this is just the facilities use form, correct? Correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, we have a first and we had a second. Motion by Mr. Sermonero, second by Mr. Wolf. Uh, Ms. Hamill, yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Ms. Tordowski? Yes. Mr. Wolf? Yes. Mr. Sermonero? Yes. And Mr. Basil? Yes. Motion passed. Okay, that concludes my buildings and grounds report. Okay. Any public comment? Thank you, members. I'm sorry. Could you speak up just a little bit? May I ask how many, I, I understand what you're saying, but are we expecting a mad rush for parking passes tomorrow?
Yeah, I don't have to tell you. I mean, the board would have to take another vote because the vote was what it was. I tried to clarify, you know, a start date, but the start date was immediately, so effective as of tomorrow. I think we'll see what tomorrow brings. He technically could, except we need him here in a little while, so. Okay, well, we could even do it later tonight. Okay, thank you for your comments. Any other comments? I'm sorry, could you speak up, sir? Is that a question about the kids coming to the Diamond Primary Hospital? The River Rock? River Rock. Yes. What kind of kids are we talking about? What are they in trouble for attack? Well, let Dr. Otto address that. I don't have the exact nomenclature for. Usually they're experiencing some kind of adjustment to the regular school environment. They could be students who are either labeled. Uh, with a learning disability, um, maybe uh, some kind of emotional, social uh, adjustment problem, or just students who are not, um, who have maybe been um, removed from the school environment by the administration or the board on an expulsion for some offense that they committed against, major offense against breaking school rules. So the gamut of the type of student that you will see runs those kinds of things. No, no. When, when, when we met with um, the gentleman who represents this company, uh, they do have one school that is specifically staffed to deal with what they call adjudicated delinquents. That's not what we're looking at. They are applying, and, and, and you have to understand, they're a separate entity. They're just using our building, but obviously we want to make sure it's safe. They have to apply to the State Department of Education for a license that meets certain requirements for an approved kind of, I don't want to say approved private school because that's another entity, but they have a private licensing that they actually have to go through in order to be approved as a site. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Any other public comments?
Thank you for your comments, but Mr. Cockle, but I am going to um, speak to some of the issues that you brought up. Okay, so just so you understand, we do have buses that run with seats empty in our school district. And by implementing a parking fee uh, for a permit, uh, which is a privilege at the school, you know, maybe what we're doing is we're incenting those students to ride the bus. Okay, and we do have to hold those seats open to those students regardless of whether they take the bus or not. Okay, because what happens in the winter when they decide they're not going to drive that day and they want to ride the bus, that seat better be available to them. Um, I personally don't think an extra $30 on a, on a parking fee uh, permit is excessive. I mean, children are paying for gasoline, they're paying for oil changes, they're paying for car insurance, car maintenance of all the different types. You know, the more they drive the car, the more frequently they have to incur those expenses. Um, I don't think an extra $30, I mean, that's only a couple of gallons of gas. Uh, is a hardship for, for students to pay if that's what they want to do in terms of getting to school and back on their own. Um, in terms of the discussion you're having in, in terms of this board nickel and diming the students or the parents or whoever, understand I look at this and I see $2,200 this year, potentially $2,900 versus $1,200. I don't see dollars here. I see a sport. I see an activity. I see something else that's been saved by the additional revenue that's been generated that otherwise may have to go in a budget crunch. And you know, we've thoroughly looked at our activities and the cost of the stipends for those activities, and that's somebody's stipend for a year. So do we get rid of a language club, or do we get rid of um, some other activity, or do you charge a parking fee? You know, I, I look at it this way. If it pays for an activity that supports a whole bunch of different students, then it's worthwhile because we have to keep the activities that this board is considering the cutting every single year for the last three years. That's my personal take on it. I understand and I appreciate where you're coming from. Um, it's not with relish that this board sits up here and makes these decisions, but if I have to make a choice, um, this is, I think, a better choice than getting rid of a program that we otherwise can keep by keeping these fees in place. I disagree with you. We're looking at marketing. But we're looking at marketing. We're looking at, uh, we've asked for donations, for fundraising, all kinds of different foundation. things. Foundation. Hmm? Start the foundation. Yeah, we started a foundation. We contributed money to a foundation to get that up and running so we can help support the programs of this school district. Um, you know, I, I think we're looking at all different options that are available to us to support this school. Any other public comment? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to finance. Item A is the normal course approvals that will come forward as we have any. Um, item B is the finance committee met last Thursday, had a rather extensive meeting, covered quite a bit. I'm going to turn it over to the chair, Mr. Basil, if you want to take it. Um, we already discussed the River Rock um, issue. We had the Food Services Corporation, Sodexo, in, um, and they were talking about their plans for monitoring uh, our meal plan on a, a much more closely uh, close basis than they had in the past, in particular a la carte um, servings. We're trying to get a handle on the number of meals that we're serving um, throughout the year uh, because obviously that supports um, the cafeteria funds. Uh, they're looking to incentivize folks to uh, buy more breakfasts um, and therefore offer breakfasts on a more, frequently base, a more frequent basis. I think they had eliminated half days and some other things, but they see that as a place where they can bring that service back. Um, we discussed um, our debt service, and um, we're just underneath the $90 million mark at this point in terms of our overall debt. Um, one of the options that was brought forward for discussion as as a way of, um, I guess, uh, leveraging our debt going forward in terms of budget considerations was to make um, a series of scoop payments, uh, which essentially is a deferred payment. You don't make the payment, your debt payment, this year or the following year, and you lump those payments into the amortization schedule going forward. So instead of spending $7 million uh, in debt service this year, you would 
divide that amongst the, the balance of your term for the remaining amount of the term. So you might spend 7.2 or 7.3 million on your your remaining debt service payments annually going forward until you. And it's a way of essentially just um, pushing off uh, what is due today and paying it tomorrow. Um, if that helps you uh, accommodate some sort of budget uh, objective. Um, I think the tenor of the, of the finance committee was that that was not something that we were willing to entertain at this time, although it was helpful to have that option on the table as a consideration for this board uh, going forward when we discuss um, budgets in the future. Uh, we did get a look at the five-year budget model and some of the assumptions that were placed into it. I asked the, um, the administration to forward that model to the entire board. It's an Excel spreadsheet, so we'll get that out to you guys so you can see it. And you can play with the numbers and see how it works. Um, it's, it's a pretty simple model, uh, but I think it will be helpful to understand or to use in terms of our budget discussions going forward. A, if we do this, this is how it's going to affect our budget for the next three to five years. Um, if you do that, this will be the consequence. So it will be a little bit easier to, um, to see the net effect of those decisions going forward. Um, last, we went through basically a preliminary autopsy of the budget of 12-13. Um, the school district essentially threw a $700,000 surplus. Um, I think of note in there was building supplies was one of the larger ticket items that uh, uh, what we had budgeted more than what we spent. We believe in large part that was a result of the budget freeze that was put in place. Uh, however, our business office said that they're going to take a closer look this year in terms of assembling the budget on how those dollars have been allocated in the past and going forward, how, how those numbers being created at the building level and pushed up uh, so that we are forecasting those expenses a little bit more accurately uh, in the future. Our rate of collection was up slightly uh, in local revenues. Correct, it was 95.8 versus 95.1 percent, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it was... Um, you know, approximately you know, another couple hundred thousand dollars in additional revenue that we had not anticipated. Um, and last but not least, like last year, we have instructed the administration to get back to the finance committee's meeting in November with a balanced budget. So uh, we Here we should, go again. We should have that at the finance committee in uh, in November and ready for board discussion in December. And it was, uh, oh, one other thing that came up. Um, we had a large, dis a long discussion about student activities. Um, it's our understanding that um, we've, st student activities are being funded in a variety of different ways. So uh, the school district funds uh, a certain portion of these activities. We pay for the stipends, we pay for transportation, we pay for uh, supplies and equipment and things of that nature. And in conjunction with that, um, you have uh, boosters organizations that are also going out and fundraising and providing um, support that way. And then there's a third source of financing that's coming into play, and that seems to be parents and students who are going out and fundraising on their own, uh, independent of the boosters organization. Through their teams. Uh, individually for their individual teams. And um, at some point in time, a series of accounts have been established for these individual sports, and uh, the concern is that, I guess it's been expressed by parents, and certainly I have a concern as a board member on this, is that there's no accounting for these funds, and that could create a Title IX issue for the school district in the sense that if a certain number of dollars are being raised for a sport that's all girls, and it's not an equal, there's not parity for a boys' sport, you could run into a Title IX issue, and vice versa. A lot of money is being raised for a boys' sport, and it's being spent on that boys' sport, and there's not parity when it comes to a girls' sport, again, the school district gets into a Title IX issue. And so um, it's something that the uh, Finance Committee has directed the administration uh, to get a handle on. So we've asked them to find out exactly um, how much money is being spent in these individual sports, both not only by the school district but by the boosters organizations and these individual fundraisers, um, how much money is being raised, Somebody needs to be accounting for all this money, you know, in terms of tax returns and things of that nature that need to be reported to the IRS. And who are the signature, uh, signatories on these accounts? Who's handling the money? 
uh, so that we have a better understanding of exactly what's going on there. And then what we'd like to do is bring in all the stakeholders, uh, the sports boosters presidents or the music boosters presidents and um, uh, those individuals, the coaches who are involved in these decisions in terms of what's being purchased and, and when and how much these things cost and get everybody involved so we have a better sense of what's happening and what's the best method forward in addressing these issues. Uh, so there's a little bit more accountability and uh, not only to um, from the school district's perspective but also to the parents and the students who are doing all this fundraising. And I think that pretty much sums it up unless somebody else has anything they want to add from it. You know? Okay. Do you have any questions, Mr. Wolf? You and Mr. Kurtz were the only two not there out of this group. <laughs> now, the only, uh, I had one question not related to you. Uh, the Harbor Castle property in Birdboro, they were, uh, as I understood, on a payment plan. Have, have they been keeping up with that plan for their back taxes? I would need to check on that. Um, I do know that they... Uh, I believe there was still some issue of the KOZ there, um, but I will check to see if they um, um, made their payments, and then um, I will email you on that. Okay. okay. Mr. Kurtz, did you have any questions? I do not. I'm going to listen to the tape when I get a chance. Okay. Any public comment? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to personnel. Under personnel, there's really, that list will grow uh, based on um, issues that, not, not issues, names that come forward for different uh, personnel actions. Just want to point out B1, small b, that's, uh, that's a correction from a previous agenda, so that's why you see what's worded in parentheses there. Just want to make sure we get that right for that individual. That's not giving anyone any more than they should have. It's just making a correction. Beyond that, that's it for personnel. A really very short list right now. Any questions from board members? Um, yeah, I do. I, I went back last to last year, uh, um, August and September. I looked at the volunteer list that we had approved, and we had a little over 17 at this point, and we're just about eight. I think we're right at about eight this year. Um, I, I, I have a feeling this is related to the change of which I, if somebody could tell me how we got back to the old way of used to come in to the district office and we got our, in, our background check right there. Um, it was $4. You walked in, you walked out, half hour with a badge. What, what changed? And I'm sorry if this is already covered. Um, no, changed, this is. went back to the, this other process. Mrs. Torshi, do you want to, since you handle this on a daily basis? What has changed is that we have been interpreting the, the volunteer policy is vast. Um, and parts of it says that you can do this, and then we refer to it where it says if you're going to do a shower on the outside of the school, you need to have your parents. So we have been trying to practice the policy of if you're outside of our building and you're alone.
people who applied last year are still in that year, so they don't have to apply again yet this year. So uh, they just, have their. If you look at the task, and you used to be simply come into the district office and you're in and out in less than a half an hour. We still now, now, you know, the stuff we sent to the state, took, they said it could take three weeks to get back. Um, so, you know, it seems like I'm, I'm fearful that it, it, we don't want to make it so daunting the task to become a volunteer that people don't do it. As long as they understand there's a differentiation between a volunteer, you're, you're pushing equipment out or you're, you're holding the water bottles for the football team or, or what have you, there's a difference between that type of volunteer and someone who's going to take a class trip to Europe and they're accompanying the class. Right. And there's, there's a big distinction between that, and I don't know that a lot of people understand that there is a difference between it's not all or nothing. It's you, if you're going to do one, you have to go through these extra steps. If you're going to do the other one, then you don't really need that. I just wanted to add um, the, the staff in the office, uh, as she said, she, she used the word vast. Our, our volunteer policy is rather complicated in terms of trying to delineate what you just pointed out. And we felt that there might be some too many loopholes in it. So for the safety of kids, we wanted to tighten it up. No, that's fine. Right. section of it when you're just going to do this little Correct. thing in the public forum. So I think that's understandable. Okay. Good question. Um, any other board comments or personnel? Okay. Any uh, public comments on personnel? All right. Seeing none, we'll move on to programs. Monthly enrollment report. As you know, board members, every year we share with you the number that we have to report to PDE. That becomes our official enrollment number for that year obviously can fluctuate but interestingly enough if you remember last January we projected enrollment based on the APC closing the number that we put in that report was 3,650 that we projected we actually opened the year 3,659 so I, I think that's a pretty good uh, projection in terms of um, where we actually wound up um, you have the report has the different numbers of grades per building or students per grade per building um, the only word of caution, and it's a, not a real strong word of caution, uh, the grade one and two classes at AEC are hovering around 25 each. So we, we think we can manage that, but if it would get any bigger, we would certainly want to at least keep you updated on that. Okay. Under the monthly student data report, that's the new report the board has asked us to put together with students and placements here, there, and everywhere. Uh, so since it's the first month of the year, we don't have anything to report. We're compiling that data, and from October forward, then you will have a, a monthly report that will give you the, the statistics uh, basically the same way we did it last year. So there's nothing to report at this point. We're putting that together. Uh, item C and D, uh, both of these are, are just one for discussion at this point um, since there is, uh, they've been submitted, but the amount is the same. For the accountability block grant, Mrs. Torsh, about 154000 where it's been for the last three or four years. And you would approve that once that's been reviewed by the state and released. And the federal program's consolidated application is Title I. Um, that's about $100,000 less, I'm sorry to report. That's, I think, based on some of the uh, sequestration issues with the federal government. That's federal money. So 
as soon as those are uh, released and approved, we will have them in front of you for approval as well. Okay. Any uh, questions or comments from the board? Okay. Any questions or comments from the public? Back on finance. Uh, you want to just save this till the end? Sure. Okay. Thanks. Any other? I have a quick comment on uh, programs. Mm -hmm. When we talk about class size numbers, can we also talk about the number of students who attend on the average day? Because even if there's 25 kids assigned to a class, does that mean that 25 are in attendance most days or are 23 in attendance or 24? The best way I can answer that, I'm sorry to interrupt, go ahead. The best way. Oh, okay. Can, yeah, go ahead, answer, please. Um, well, I, I think it's a quick answer. We average about a 95% attendance rate district wide. I think it's a little higher at the elementary. So you could take that number and multiply it by whatever between 95 and 98% on a daily basis of who would be there. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, any other questions? All right. Uh, moving on to policy. We'll just need to set an October date. We have October 9th. October 9th. What's that? It's usually, are you sure? We usually were the second Wednesday of the month? Wednesday, second Wednesday of October, October 9th. Is that the second Wednesday? I'll take your word. I don't have a calendar in front of me. October 9th is the second Wednesday. That's what I have in my calendar. I have the policy committee. We are on. Okay. And that's at 7 p.m.? Okay. Yep. Yes, it is. No, we think that's great. Matthew Okay. Um, any other board member comments? Any comment from the public on policy? Okay, seeing none. We'll move on to transportation. Old I have no further reports under items 12 through 16. Okay. Does any board member have anything to bring up under 12 through 16? Okay, 12 through 14. Okay, what Mr. I Cockle. I'm sorry? Uh, under public uh, presentation on issues, Mr. Cockle, you had a question for us about finance. still in the process of completing the audit, so we haven't That's nailed that number down just yet. Um, there were some accounts payable that had trickled it, you know, we're getting paid in August and whatnot that weren't part of the July or June accounting. We think it's around $700,000. Um, I would say that right now that money is sitting in fund balance, okay? And, um, you know, it's there to be used as the board sees fit going forward uh, for the rest of this calendar year and, and budgeting for the following calendar year, just like any other surplus has been used in the past.
$700,000, as um, Mr. Wolf has put it, is our kindergarten program and our extracurriculars. And I think we spent four hundred and some odd thousand dollars on the half-day program and three hundred thousand dollars net on our right. uh, extracurricular program. So the surplus we threw, as he was sort of illustrating to you, the surplus we threw last year for twelve thirteen, we as a board can almost say, well, look, you know, maybe that helps pay. That pays the, the bill for fourteen fifteen activities. And so now we don't have to have that discussion. We're going to talk about other things clearly, but you know, maybe that gives the board. And as Frank said, look, you know, it's just. I kind of look at it this way. Whatever money we have in our fund balance, that's one of the levers we have the option of pulling every single year, right? How much of that are we going to spend down? So if we have more money there to spend down instead of cutting a program or instead of raising taxes or something else, then that just makes it easier for the board and for the public to do. And I think you heard from this board last year in June when we said, you know what, we're going to spend more fund balance and bring program back, right? I mean, that's ultimately what the board did. We sat down and said... I think we allocated $2.3 million for this budget year that we're in now, 13-14, and we were at something like one point something prior to that, 1.9 or something like that. We, we went and put another three or $400,000 into the budget, and basically you know, we're, we're hoping that we're, we're spot on here. Now understand with a budget, it's a budget. There's no guarantees, right? And a $700,000 surplus is a 1.35% variance on a $52 million budget. 1%. It could have gone the other way. So... Look, 
I'm with you. I, I've got the numbers in front of me. I can tell you what the surpluses were for the last five years and, and the deficits. Going back to when I first got on this board six years ago, and, and it's something we all look at and we all wrestle with. I mean, why on earth would you want to raise taxes or cut a program when you're sitting on a pile of money? We all said that last year. And we all said, well, let's spend the money down first before we continue on that path. But when you're looking at $3.5 million deficits year after year, clearly something's got to go. Yep. Any other um, public comments on any item? Okay, seeing none, do I have a motion to adjourn? I have one question. Oh, yes. Uh, to the point of the public, uh, the person that came up for the public about changing the deadline for changing the fees. Yes. If we were to make the, do I need to make another motion to just, just amend extend it. the deadline? Oh, we'd have to vote on it. Yeah. Yeah, we'd have to we'd have to make a motion and vote as a board to change what we already voted on. Okay, and I'd like to make that motion to change the effectivity. At the, close the effective of the date to the tomorrow. close oh, tomorrow after, after school. to the close of business after tomorrow. Okay, so effectively it would be September 11th. This it would go into effect. Yeah. Because the person that voted, I'll have to bring and that, that way, back. Uh, if somebody does show up to school tomorrow with their money. Yeah. Okay, so there's a motion on the table. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay. Any other discussion? Mr. Kurtz? No. Can you just restate the motion? The motion is to extend the effective date of the uh, parking and permit fee uh, to September 11th as opposed to September 10th. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, um, can we get a roll call vote? Motion by Mr. Wolf, seconded by Ms. Trudowski. Uh, Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Ms. Trudowski? Yes. Mr. Wolf? Yes. Mr. Shermanero? Yes. Ms. Hamill? Yes. And then Mr. Bates? Yes. Motion passed. Okay. Um, any other? Board comments? Okay, seeing none, um, do I get a motion closed? We have a first. Second. Second. This means thank you.